Looks back for Calvert-Lewin and now Memphis Depay. This is brilliant football from Barcelona and we get the lead. An early lead as well, which I think Calvert. Lovely pass for Ansu, who should be making it 4-0 for Barcelona. Still Ansu Fati, easy finish right there from Ansu as Barcelona in cruise control 4-0. So here we are back again with another episode of the Barcelona career mode series over on FIFA 21. Now last episode we had a massive curveball thrown at us with PSG meeting the release clause of Felipe Coutinho and they've basically stolen him. Now that means we do have a lot of cash to work with and in today's episode we're going to make a signing to technically replace Felipe Coutinho. Last episode of course we made the signing of Gravenberch for some squad depth. Today's episode, we're looking to make a big signing with the money we've just got. But let's not forget, we've got the Spanish Super Cup in today's episode as we try and win another trophy in this series. We'll be taking on Villarreal in the semi-finals and then one of the two Madrid clubs in a potential final. So I'm looking to win this tournament in today's video as well. I mean, there's no denying today's episode is a big one. We could end up making a massive signing in this series apart from that Spanish Super Cup. So if you guys are enjoying all the career mode content on the channel, drop a like on the video. 4,500 likes, I'm sure we can hit that. Subscribe if you are new around here and let's get on with it. We're starting off the episode with a press conference. As usual, get involved by dropping in your questions to get featured in the video. First one of the day, sign a backup striker because I think Depay will be able to replace Coutinho and this will help your team to play aggressively on the pitch. Good suggestion, Memphis Depay as a cam, I think would be way more effective anyways. He's got the pace, shooting, the passing and the dribbling. He's literally the perfect cam and with Pedri emerging as a top tier young talent, I think it'd be stupid for us to sign a cam and rather focusing on signing a striker has to be the place. So in today's episode, instead of looking for a direct Coutinho replacement, what we're going to do is we're going to reinforce our striker position and sign another striker. That is the plan. Next up, instead of upping Ravenberger's skill moves, you should focus on his defensive stats. His defensive rating is only 58 and you said you wanted him as more of a defensive option. That is very true. We signed Ravenberge to give us a more defensive outlook in our midfield, maybe potentially being the next Sergio Busquets. And by having him on a central midfield plan, he's not going to be improving on his defensive stats. So what we're going to do is we're going to put him on a ball winning midfielder training plan and we'll keep that for the next eight weeks or so. See how his stats improve. And then we'll decide what direction we want to go with player growth on Ryan Gravenberg. Because I think we've got too many aggressive and attacking and, you know, skillful midfielders in the team. We need that gritty midfielder like Gravenberg could potentially become. So this is what we're doing. Ball winning midfielder plan on Gravenberg. Next up, what would be your reaction if you face PSG in the Champions League? It'll be a bit emotional, I'm not going to lie. We'll be up against not just Leo Messi. But Coutinho, Neymar, so many former Barca players, but of course the Messi factor is going to be immense. PSG have made it to the round of 16 by the way, they'll be up against Inter Milan. And at some point I've got a sneaky feeling that we're going to be up against PSG and it's going to be difficult. Neymar, Mbappe, Messi, Coutinho, it's going to be an unbelievable attack from them and defending against them is going to be virtually impossible but we'll see but yeah if we do end up facing PSG it will be the biggest game of this entire series and it will be epic but time will tell if that ever happens in this series first we need to get through Juventus and Ronaldo in the Champions League but for now press conference done let's move on another solid episode from Dominic Calvert-Lewin a lot of goals coming from him now overall we didn't really play that well as in the last episode we lost to Spurs and it was a bit dodgy but Calvert-Lewin continues to score goal after goal he's our top scorer this season with 13 goals and well he picks up yet another player of the episode award time to talk transfers so we've got about 87 million in the bank with about 200,000 in our wage budget we can certainly splash the cash on a big player to improve the team initially my plan was to go for a direct replacement for Coutinho but as you would have seen it just makes so much more sense going for a striker and converting Depay into a cam because Memphis has got all the stats to be an elite cam for us that's what I just said so what we're going to do first is see how long it'll take to convert Depay back into that cam position it hopefully shouldn't take long let's let's see development plan on Memphis Depay position 
A CDM takes 430 weeks, that's not happening. But a CAM just takes four weeks, brilliant. So in a month, we'll have Memphis Depay back into a CAM. This new feature is awesome man, player position changing, but that's the plan with Memphis Depay. Now all we gotta do is sign a striker. And I've got a few players in mind with about 87 million, we might just be able to afford him. Lautaro Martinez is a player I've always wanted to have in this series at some point, but I feel like at this point of time, he's just too expensive for us. 115.5 million, that's I guess approximately what we'll need to dish out to sign him, but at the moment, we do not have the money to sign Lautaro. So we might have to look elsewhere. I would love to bring him in. He's got unbelievable stats. He's got the pace, the strength, the heading, the composure. Literally your perfect striker. The finishing, the dribbling. Can't really ask for more. But at this point of time, we can't afford him. So we might have to look elsewhere for that striker position. A lot of the top tier strikers like Erling Braut Haaland are simply outside our budget at the moment as expected. So we're going to have to look elsewhere. And Richarlison seems like the perfect choice. Him competing for Dominic calvert and I think would be brilliant in our team. He's got the high potential. His stats at the moment are pretty incredible with pace. Dribbling offers something completely different to, of course, calvert Lewin, And this might be the perfect signing. The only question is if can we afford him. At the moment, he's playing for Arsenal, which is interesting. So he might be more expensive. He's valued at 61 million. That is definitely a positive. Okay, from 65 to 89 million, we're gonna have to be very smart about negotiations here. The best part about Richarlison is that he's super versatile, can play on the left, on the right as well, so it's gonna be a great signing if we can pull this off. Oh my god, EA, please, for the sake of humanity, fix this stupid glitch. They're wearing number 99 icon jerseys, man. It's so weird seeing them negotiate, honestly. Anyways, we're gonna go in with a 65 million offer for Richarlison. Are Arsenal willing to play with me with that? Come on, 65 mil. They want 82.4, but the good thing is we can afford this. I'm definitely going to be making this transfer happen no matter what, but definitely don't want to be getting screwed on the transfer fee. So we'll counter with 75 million, which I feel is a very good counter offer. And they're willing to work with that. There you go, 75 million for Richarlison. Let's get this deal done. Okay, so Richarlison only demands a rotation squad role. That actually works really well because then we won't have to, you know, endure complaints from either Calvert-Lewin or Richarlison when either don't play. So that helps with the dynamic of the squad. Four-year contract length, perfectly fine for me. No release loss, absolutely perfect as well. Don't want him leaving. And let's now see his wage demands. So we're going to have to offer him the wages. I'm going to go 130, sounds about right, and we'll counter with about 600 or 500,000. That should work. We'll find out. Richarlison, is he going to sign for Barcelona? He wants a lot more, especially in terms of the appearance bonus and whatnot. We'll offer this. 130,000 in wages, 1.1 million in signing bonus. He's willing to work with that, and with that, we've just signed Richarlison to Barcelona. We're replacing one Brazilian in Coutinho with another Brazilian. 75 million for Richarlison. This transfer was only possible because um, PSG were willing to pay an absolute fortune for the 29 year old Felipe Coutinho, but ultimately, we've got our man 84 rated. He's injured at the moment. Are you kidding me? Wait, what? No, he isn't. He is fully fit. Why did that injury logo pop up there? I'm confused now. We gotta wait until we can get his sharpness and all up. His morale seems to be a bit dodgy at the moment. I don't know why, but that's a weird one here. Unhappy because management is poor. Maybe he didn't like being at Arsenal. Anyways, we've got this transfer done. Let's hope he can be brilliant for us here at Barcelona. Here's a quick look at our season objectives. Last episode was a difficult one as we failed the group winners challenge. Today's episode, though, I want to make more progress with both the Ansu Fati as well as the Riki Pui challenge. And I'm also going to be playing Eric Garcia and Jules Conde together in one of the games. So let's hope we can see a clean sheet. We need to step things up with progress. The Spanish Super Cup, let's be real, it isn't the most valuable of trophies. In the end, nobody cares who wins it. So why not take a bit of a different approach and give a lot of the youngsters a chance in this tournament and give them that experience of high-level football? You know what, that is the approach we're going to take this time around with the Spanish Super Cup. Would help, you know, cope with fitness as well on all of our important first team players. 
That might be a risky play, but I think it's worth doing that. As I said before, I'm willing to give a lot of the youngsters a chance in this Spanish Super Cup semi-final game against Villarreal. We've got Gravenberch making his Barcelona debut, Pedri starting, Trincao, Calvert-Lewin at the back, Jules Conde and Eric Garcia playing together, Max Arens gets the start as well, Jordi Massip. I thought, you know what, let's give Testegen a rest in this game. If we get to the final, yeah, we'll have Testegen back in the team. we got to make someone else the captain, though. And I feel it has to be Ricky Puig. We're going to make Ricky Puig the captain of the team for this one against Villarreal. Barca against them. Let's get into it. Now, we won the Spanish Super Cup last season, and I'm hoping for something similar this season as well. We're taking a different approach, giving a lot of the youngsters a chance of, you know, playing knockout games. Let's see how they fare. Samuel Chukweze looking for a long ball approach. Jordi Masip needs to come forward here. Big save from Jordi Masip, but the rebound is going to fall kindly for Dani Parejo. Still Parejo, it's chaotic defending. Just the start we didn't need. Absolutely embarrassing. Danny Parejo puts Villarreal 1-0 up and this is a disaster. The worst possible start that could happen. No clean sheet for Jules Conde and Eric Garcia. It was chaotic defending. I'll be real, it was genuinely embarrassing there. Not the start we needed. This is a knockout game, guys, so there are no do-overs. we got to step things up. We can't keep getting embarrassed like this. I'm trying to whip this one in for Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin's header hits the side netting. That might be something we need to do more often, you know, controlling the striker during corners. Because that almost went in. Ravenberch, good pass to Calvert-Lewin. I'm going to hold him off. And now look for Ansu. Ansu on that left foot, cuts inside. Oh my god, that is simply outrageous from Ansu Fati. Straight away, we're back in the game. Wow, Ansu. The way he brought it onto his right foot and then just uh, picked his spot, bang. That's what Ansu Fati is all about. Lethal in front of goal. Barcelona make it 1-1. I'm glad we've got the equaliser really, really quickly. To be fair, that could have easily been called as a foul because look at what Trincao does. He literally barges into the goalkeeper. Fair enough though. He does what he had to do to get us the goal. I'm surprised the referee didn't call that as a foul. Corner for us. I forgot to control Calvert-Lewin, but it still might be effective for us. And this time he misses. I mean, he's missed twice uh, from a corner. We really should have scored from at least one set piece because this was a free header on target and this would have probably gone in. Come on, Calvert. You've got to be doing better, especially with Richarlison, like, on your back right now. He, we haven't put him in the starting 11 in this one, but in the second half, he will be making his debut. Oh my god, space has opened up a lot. Here's Donny Malen on the attack. We know he's a good dribbler. Looks inside and that's... I can't defend that. You really can't defend that. The dribbling there from the Villarreal attacker was absolutely brilliant. How do you even defend that? It's virtually impossible. They've made it 2-1 just before halftime as well. The last thing we needed was that. Yeah, this is proving to be a tough game. Playing the youngsters, we knew this is a possibility. But let's see what the kids are capable of doing. Come on, Ansu. We need more from you, Angelino, Pedri and all. Come on. Oh my god. If we go 2-0 down here, that'll be atrocious. Not 2-0, but 3-1 actually. Oh, I'm a broken man at this point. With the last few episodes, guys, we've been getting battered in La Liga. We lost the Clasico, we lost the Spurs. And now we could end up getting knocked out in the Spanish Super Cup, if not for some heroics that we need now in the second half. What have we just done here? Huh, <sighs> Moy Gomez makes it 3-1. Halftime, I think we need to make a lot of changes. You know what, guys? I'm going to be bringing on Richarlison for his debut for Barcelona. The problem is his morale is low. And that's why he's losing a rating, but he's still good enough to do a job up top, I feel. Depay coming on for Pedri as well, and Dion coming on as well. We're making the changes, man, and we're going for the win. Dani Parejo, is he going to score again? This is virtually embarrassing. We've just been completely outclassed by Villarreal in the Spanish Super Cup. No Messi, no Griezmann. This challenge is proving to be a real one. At this rate... We're going to end up getting knocked out in the Champions League because we're not good enough by the looks of it. And even in La Liga, we're second. I don't know, man. It's it's just not working for us this season. Richarlison has had a pretty terrible game, but it's only his first game for the club. So can't really blame him. But this is proving to be a really abysmal performance from us. Full time and we're out of the Spanish Super Cup. Didn't expect to be saying that. We won this last season with the help of Messi and co, but... Now, without the likes of Messi, Griezmann, we've lost in the semi-finals to Villarreal 4-1. We were completely outplayed here. And I've got to take the blame on myself. Playing Eric Garcia and Jules Conde together, 
it's it's a recipe for disaster. The two of them just aren't good enough. Jules Conde is, but Eric Garcia just had a shocker, guys. An absolute shocker. Yeah, we've been knocked out and, yeah, embarrassed as well. At the end of the day, nobody really cares about the Spanish Super Cup. Let's be real, so... It's all right, let's not make a big deal out of this because we need to focus on what matters and it's La Liga. We've got to fight to be at the very top and yeah, we're gonna have to do it, man. So we can't really think too much about this Spanish Super Cup defeat. Also, the fact that we played our youngsters, I think my first team would have got the job done there. By the way, I just realized that Lenya's contract is getting over in six months. We better negotiate with him and get him to re-sign with us. Otherwise, we'll be losing him for free, which I do not want. So let's get this done. I'm not entirely sure about his future at the club because he's not growing. We've barely given him a chance. That is true, but... I don't want him leaving for free, that's for sure. We'll give him a sporadic squad role player, which he should accept. He does, which is awesome. He wants a one-year extension. There's no point in that. Let, let's make it two years to get him on a fairly long-term contract. There you go, he's willing to work with that. He wants a 20 million release clause. You know what? I'm okay with that. If someone comes to me with 20 million for Alenia, I'm okay with that. So, there you go, that is done. In terms of wages, we'll offer him the same exact wages, 84,000. And maybe 500,000 as a signing bonus. Is that a bit too much? I think it may be, be a bit too much. But it's got the job done. Alenia has re-signed with Barcelona for the next couple of years. We simulated our next game in La Liga against relegation threat in Leganes. We do end up picking a 3-1 win with Memphis. Depay scoring. Usman Dembele and Ansu Fati contributing as well. So a 3-1 win. Not a bad way to bounce back from. By the way, fair enough, Villarreal. They ended up winning the Spanish Super Cup, beating Real Madrid on penalties. That's a trophy for them. I'm sure they'll value that. Yo, that's actually amazing. Madrid losing the final. you love to see it. Next up, a cup game for us, which we do end up winning against Eibar. 1-0, just about. Xavi Simmons, the goal scorer. And also, we got ourselves a clean sheet with Eric Garcia and Jules Conde. So... That helps us out just a tad bit with our objectives. Next up in La Liga, we've got probably the most annoying fixture on the calendar. We're basically facing the Spanish Burnley in Hitafe. They're going to drop deep. They're going to be defensive. It's going to be a frustrating game. They're 8th in La Liga, which shows what they're doing is effective. This is going to be a really challenging fixture away to Hetafe and we got to keep winning to keep pace with Real Madrid who so far are unbeaten in La Liga. I'm not messing about for this one guys, going with what I deem to be my strongest 11, Calvert-Lewin, Dembele, Depay, Fati all starting. We're not messing about, Richarlison at the moment isn't one of my first team players because he doesn't have the high morale and sharpness which means he is actually losing overalls. Like, look at this, guys. When we put Richarlison up top, he's only an 84-rated player. Not really losing overalls, but he's not at the highest possible rating he can be. Whereas Calvert-Lewin gets himself a plus 6 boost, and he's just absurdly good at the moment. So for now, Calvert-Lewin is our number one striker. That's our team. Let's get into it. There's absolutely no denying that Hetafe are one of the most annoying teams to play in La Liga. They just are... Uh... So defensive, so frustrating. They try and waste as much time as possible. It's it's a mess playing against them. But if we can get through them and win this game, that'll be really nice. I'd love to do that. Barcelona in real life failed to beat Hitafe, if we do remember. Ricky Puig sees Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And now Memphis Depay. Early chance for us. Memphis shoots just the start we needed. Going 1-0 up against Hitafe. Now our job is to keep that lead. And keep pushing for more goals. There's no room for error here. We're not dropping points away to Hetafe this time around. We're going to get the dub here no matter what, guys. Calvert-Lewin picking up the assist. Memphis Depay with a lovely finish. One thing I've noticed with Calvert-Lewin now. At the start, he was all about goals. But now he's even providing assists, which is awesome to see. Memphis Depay in that new position, playing as a cam, really shining. Maximovic, it's brilliant play from Hetafe. And they've actually missed. It's come off the post. I had literally left my controller there because I thought I was going 1-1 there. Fair enough. We got super lucky with that. And now on the break, we could actually end up scoring. Go on, Usman. I have not much support in the box though, so nothing to come from that attack. But we're really lucky not to be 1-1 at this stage. Oh, lovely return for Ricky Puig now to potentially score another goal for us. Ricky Puig, the finishing. He's got to be converting that. That's a tough blow for us because... We got to make it 2-0 as soon as possible. We saw on the other end, Hetafe are capable of scoring. That should have been 2-0. Halftime, not really the best of performances from us, but we're creating a few chances here and there, and we've got the lead. We just got to keep going this way. 
You know what, guys? For this second half, I'm going to bring on Richarlison. I want him to get, you know, used to playing for Barcelona as soon as possible. And the only way that'll happen if he's on the pitch. So we're bringing him on for the second half and let's hope he can have an impact. Oh, here we go now. Usman Dembele looking for Richarlison. He's got the pace here. 1v1. Richarlison shoots and he's dragged his shot wide. Things aren't clicking for him just yet for Barcelona. That's a chance I think he normally would have taken. Ah, oh, that's frustrating to not have made it 1 or 2 nil actually from that position. Oh, come on. Memphis, I see Richarlison making a very good run. This could be the moment we're waiting for. Richarlison 1v1 shoots and he misses again. It's just not been his day. Richarlison has had the chances. How close was that? Oh my god, that was, uh, that is so frustrating to not see that pop in the back of the net. Ah, uh, Richarlison again, this is the chance he can't miss from here. He absolutely can't miss and the goal we've been wanting to see for the entire episode happens. Richarlison gets his first goal in a Barcelona shirt and look at the way he celebrates with Usman Dembele and co. Lovely finish right there from Richarlison. Memphis providing the assist here. But yeah, third time's the charm for Memphis. He gets the goal. Let's go. Barcelona lead 2 0 against Hitafe. And that should be the goal that gets us all three points. Ansu looks to bring the ball inwards now. Still Ansu Fati. Lovely play to find Memphis Depay. He's going to score this. Of course he is. Memphis Depay makes it 3 0 Barcelona. Floodgates have opened and now we're unstoppable. Good to see Ansu pick up an assist as that helps with the objective. And Depay with a couple of goals and an assist in this game. What a performance from the Dutchman. You know what guys, I think we needed a result like this against a decent team because confidence was definitely a bit low because we've been struggling for the last few episodes but finally we beat Hitafe 3-0, good 3 points secured, really happy with the result. We simulate another game in the Spanish Cup beating Levante 3-0 with our second team that helps us out with the Conde Garcia objective. I mean, through simming games we might just be able to complete that objective because on the pitch it's a disaster when those two play together. Anyways, Adama, Memphis and Conde score the goals for us. Now we find ourselves playing one more La Liga game in this episode, which is against Villarreal. Yes, the team that knocked us out in the Spanish Super Cup. A chance for us to already get some revenge and beat them in La Liga. That is what I'm hoping for. But we might find ourselves in a bit of a difficult spot because Memphis Depay is suspended for this game. He picked up like I think way too many yellows recently. And in that game in the Spanish Cup, he picked up another yellow and that's why he's suspended for this one. I guess it's an opportunity for Pedri. So this is how we're lining up against Villarreal. We've got Longley and Delict against the Villarreal attack this time around, so I'm much more confident. Pedri starts in Cambridge, Charleston up top. Because I feel like we need to get him used to playing the Barcelona way ASAP. He's finally getting some overall boosts as well. A plus two on him, which is nice. Dembele and Fati on either side. Let's go out there and get the win. Donny Malen on the attack now. That is awful there from Junior Firpo. He recovers well. Delict almost gives it away. Get the ball away, Delict. What on earth was that? He forgot where the ball was. Every episode, we've got one defender or goalkeeper doing something absolutely moronic. And today it was Delict's turn. What on earth was that, man? Honestly. Have a look at this, guys. I couldn't, couldn't get Delict to select the ball there. I don't know what he was trying to do, man. Every episode something like this happens. It's a joke, man. We're 1-0 down to Villarreal and we might end up losing to them again. I, I can't have this. We've got to beat them. Still Dembele, I need some more movement. Why is Frankie Dion just standing there? Pedri, this has to be a goal now. Pedri on that right foot. Simple play from Pedri, but so, so effective. The way he got onto his right foot, I think he floored the keeper and defender right there. And we make it 1-1. Pedri getting an opportunity with Depay being suspended. And he's doing his very best to make the most of it. I want to see the replay for this. Because the way Pedri got it onto his right foot, it was beautiful. Like, look at this. One, bang. And then, yeah, the keeper and the defender were all on the floor. There's no stopping Pedri when he's doing that. His ball control is immaculate. And, well, 1-1. Half time against Villarreal. And they're giving us a tough fight. I mean, it's expected. They smashed us 4-1 in the Spanish Super Cup. We're much better now though, it's 1-1 and I feel like we've got what it takes to win this game. I'm not gonna lie, I do want a physical presence up top and that's why Calvert-Lewin comes on for Richarlison for this second half. Here's Pedri going on a run. Oh, that is a lovely release for Calvert-Lewin, has to score, it'd be harder for him to not score from that. Calvert-Lewin 2-1 against Villarreal, but Pedri, the orchestrator of that attack, he has had a phenomenal game. Pedri with a goal and now of course the assist. I mean, look at that. What a substitution 
uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin has proven to being. I mean, he's just come on within a few minutes and scored. Pedri with the assist, that pass from him was superb. And a simple finish for the Englishman who scores yet another goal in La Liga. How many is that for him now? That is his 12th goal in La Liga this season. Brilliant. Lovely stuff there from Ansu Fati. Looking for Frankie de Jong. Still de Jong. The dribbling is on point. We're keeping the ball well. Calvert-Lewin. Now looks for Pedri. That is outrageous from Pedri. And Usman Dembele with a lovely finish. Pedri has completely outclassed Villarreal here. I mean, this is as good as a performance it gets from a single player. The assist from Pedri. The... I don't even know how to describe him anymore. He is just simply sensational. Look at that for a pass from Pedri. What a performance from, I think, the 18-year-old now in this series. And Dembele with a cool, calm, calculated finish as well. Barcelona lead 3-1 now. Just what we needed. We've now got a two-goal cushion. I'm going to be subbing off Pedri. His fitness is really low at the moment. We'll bring on Trincao and maybe... Yeah, let's just play Trincao down the middle. It doesn't really matter all that much. Oh, uh, Chukwese has been played in behind here. We're trying to keep hold of him. Oh my god, that was a good effort from him. Ter Stegen had to be big there and make a big save as well, which he did. Cross coming in from Villarreal. The header is decent. Once again, Ter Stegen with a big save. I'm not going to lie, he's had a pretty good episode. And there you have it. Full time against Villarreal. We do get our revenge against them in La Liga. 3-1 win. A great performance. Especially considering we went 1-0 down, we really responded well, and I'm happy with the win. We're still only second in La Liga, Real Madrid just seemingly can't lose, man. The Clasico that we'll have against Madrid at some point this season, that's going to be so key to deciding the title, but for now, Madrid are league leaders. This episode, we did make some good progress with our objectives, Ansu Fati with a few goal contributions, we did well with the future backline challenge as well, so can't complain. Now, about the player of the episode, I think it's between Memphis, Depay and Pedri for me. Pedri was simply outrageous in this episode. He was unbelievable against Villarreal. Memphis Depay was unbelievable against Etafe. It's a tough one, but it's your call to make. Let me know in the comments section who deserves to win player of the episode. Okay, so we're ending off today's episode on transfer deadline day. Next episode, we'll get through this. Champions League round of 16 as well in the next one. We've got about 11 million to spend. I'm not sure if we're going to be doing any transfer business unless... We, of course, sell a few players. I am tempted about Carlos Selenia because we've just received an offer from FC Porto. 11.5 million on him. I don't know, man. I really don't know. Let me know in the comments section what we should be doing. If we sell Alenia, I might go ahead and sign another midfielder. I'm not entirely sure. Depends on what you guys want me to do. But next episode could prove to be interesting with Deadline Day, Champions League and whatnot. But for now, this is where we're wrapping things off. Drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new around here, and our journey with Barca in this post-Messi era continues in the next one. I'll catch you guys next time.